and welcome to FIG's weekly economic and trading update. I'm Mark Bailey and this is John Sheridan. So Mark, last week was dominated by politics. What do you see in the economic data coming out this week? Yeah, so there's a bit of retail sales that came out in Australia and that was a bit weaker than expected. And also the RBA uh, had the cash uh, meeting as well in terms of their holding the cash rate um, stable. Um, in terms of the commentary, it was a bit more dovish than probably expected. They really focused on the weakness that they had seen in the employment market and the jobs data, the split between part-time and full-time, probably wasn't as strong as they had expected. Um, in addition as well, you had APRA and ASIC and the RBA all commenting in terms of trying to cool down the housing market on the eastern seaboard, Sydney and, and, and Melbourne especially, and different regulations coming out around that. Yeah, so and then moving to America, the Fed's balance sheet was a big focus after the FOMC's minutes, um, with a lot of participants talking about the p potential for reducing that going into the year end. So what that actually means is it's kind of de facto tightening, so maybe they don't actually have to raise the, the cash rate as much as expected. They're still pricing in around about two times in terms of the market, another 25 basis points uh, times two. That probably implies that you're going to see a bit more yield curve steepening as well. So investors should probably think about moving some of the long dated bonds into the shorter dated bonds. And that's on top of some of the dynamics that we're already seeing with regards to potential for the Trump uh, inf reflation trade, where you may be going to see higher inflation down the lines because of fiscal spend. So again, you know, it's maybe positioning clients a bit more defensively, both in terms of um, where they sit on the uh, duration curve, and also in terms of credit quality as well. You know, we've seen a big rally in credit spreads, and you know they're trading at you know pretty tight levels compared to uh, recent uh, relative value and recent uh, history as well. So, I think that's uh, an important thing for for clients to focus on. So that's kind of the economic news, and you know how is that translated into what your clients have been doing? Well, in keeping with your theme about potential steepening of the yield curve, we've just been re-examining client portfolios, making sure that their duration level is appropriate and also their credit exposure is appropriate. So, you know, as, as you know, we do a lot of work on credit analysis and, and that's one of the strengths of the business. So we're still comfortable with the credit exposures that we hold, but we're just taking a view really about the balance of investment grade and high yield credit in, in client portfolios. What we've seen in terms of particular bonds this week is continuing on adding the inflation linked annuities into client portfolios, typically very strong uh, credits. Also, we've been looking at the investment grade floating rate notes, which add that investment grade exposure to portfolios as well as reducing the duration uh, because they're floating and not fixed. Yeah. And I think we're still looking at uh, portfolio splits between fixed floating and inflation, a third, a third, a third, is that correct? That's right, yes. I mean, in the, in the last couple of years, obviously, uh, with, in, with interest rates falling, having an overweight to fixed rate has been a good play for investors. We're just looking at bringing that back now with, as you said, the curve steepening and the, the rate hike environment uh, and increasing yields in the, in the US, potentially driving our curve upwards as well. So just looking at bringing that fixed rate exposure back to, um, as you said, in line with the one third, one third, one third in portfolios. Yeah, I think that's very sensible, you know, in terms of moving the, those clients a bit more defensively and conservatively position, given where we are in the rate cycle and in terms of the credit cycle as well, absolutely. I think that's the right thing to do. So what are you focusing on this week coming up, Mark, in economic terms? It's actually all about jobs, whether you're in the States or in Australia. So this week in, uh, ahead in Australia, we've got the, the jobs data that's coming out. And again, we'll be looking in terms specifically about the part-time, full-time split. We're expected to create around about 20,000 jobs. And the unemployment rate is expected to be constant at 5.9%. Also domestically Australia, we've got a really, really important RBA um, financial stability review, which again will give us a bit more details in terms of the central banks thinking on controlling the, the property sector and some of the, the limits that APRA have put in in terms of the constraints on investor only loans and also interest only um, loans as well. So that's gonna be a key. Looking towards the States, we've got the non-farm payroll figure out later today on Friday. The consensus there is for around about 180,000 jobs to be created. There was a really, really strong um, ADP employment data on Wednesday um, print as well. That, so that probably indicates that it's going to be a bit stronger than expected. Also next week as well, you've got the CPI in the States. Should core should come in around about 2.3%. Anything significantly higher than that, you could see some fairly major changes in terms of uh, investors in the markets, consensus around the yield curve and future interest rate tightening. Thanks, John. Thanks, Mark. And thanks for watching. Tin hats on, enjoy. If you need any more information, go to the wire.